All right, the last three-dimensional shape that we find surface area of in grade 8 is cylinders. So let's think about what a cylinder is. So we talked about this in class. So a cylinder is made up of two circles, and it's also made up of a rectangle. So we have one rectangle. And the rectangle, we might also sometimes see it referred to as our lateral area and it's talking about this part here that kind of wraps around the cylinder okay now if you were to think of like a soup can or something at home if you were to cut the label on it and then peel the label off the label is just going to unroll into that nice rectangle or same thing an empty toilet paper roll which is a cylinder if you take some scissors and you cut up the side of it and unfold your cardboard it's just going to make that rectangle Okay, so thinking about surface area, surface area of a prism is really just the sum of all of the areas of the faces. So that means if I can find the area of my two circles and the area of my one rectangle and I add it all together, that's going to be the surface area. So as a reminder, from grade seven, we learned that the surface area of a circle is pi r squared which is another way of writing 3.14 times the radius squared. And we usually approximate pi using 3.14 as our approximation. Now, I need to have not just one circle, but I need to have two circles. So if one circle is 3.14 times the radius squared, or pi r squared, two circles is going to be two times pi r squared, or 2 times 3.14 times the radius squared. Okay. Now, the rectangle, and we're going to talk about this more in class, and I have some great uh, demonstrations. I'm not a very good animator, but there are some fantastic animations that show what this looks like online, and I'll have links to them in the classroom. When I unfold my rectangle, so normally we would say our rectangle, we would say length, times width. But this is a very special rectangle. This rectangle has a very special length, and the length of this rectangle ends up being the same as the circumference of the circle, because if you imagine taking this as a rectangle, I have to roll it back up, and when I roll it back up, it's going to go all the way around the circle. So the length of this rectangle is really just the circumference. Now, you might remember the circumference of a circle. We find that by going 2 times pi times the radius, okay, or 2 pi r. Now, we're also going to refer to that as 3.14 instead of pi in our formula. That's just my length. The width, it really is just a width, but we're going to think of it as how tall. Our cylinder is. So my cylinder is 10 centimeters tall, so that's just the width of the rectangle, and we generally generally refer to it instead as the height of the cylinder, so how tall the cylinder is. So what we're working with in our formula is we're looking at the area of, we've got to find two circles, and then we've got to add in the area of the one rectangle. So cylinders are the one where most of the time you guys are probably going to want to just work from the formula, but I want you to understand where the formula comes from. So it comes from two circles, which is two times pi r squared. I'll write it out as 3.14 so we remember. So it's two times 3.14 times the radius squared. And then we're going to add that area of the rectangle. And then remember, the area of the rectangle is special. It is the circumference, which is two times 3.14 times the radius, and then we multiply it by the height. So that's really the formula that we're working with. You can just plug your numbers into that formula, and as long as you multiply in the correct order and then add after, you're going to get it right. But we can just as easily separate it, and it's probably better to separate your formula and think about what each piece of it means, because again, as we get into grade 9, we start making things more difficult by attaching uh, shapes to one another, and so we have to start thinking about taking some different sides away. So let's actually calculate 
what we've got going on here. So if I was to look at the circle, the area for a circle is 3.14 times the radius squared. So my radius here, it tells me from the center to the outside, that's radius. My radius is 5 centimeters, so this is 3.14 times 5 squared. Now remember, exponents means I have to do this 5 squared first. So I'm going to do that 5 squared first. 5 squared is the same thing as 5 times 5, and that gives me 25. So now I've got 3.14 times 25, and that's going to give me 78.5 centimeters squared for the one circle. But I need two circles. So I'm going to take my area of one circle, and I'm going to multiply it by two, and I'm just going to sneak a two in front there. So one circle is 78.5. In total, two circles is 157. Okay, for the rectangle portion, the rectangle portion, we said we're going to be working with the circumference, so that's 2 times 3.14 times the radius times the height, so that's 2 times 3.14 times uh, the radius is 5, and then the height of the cylinder is 10. This part here just as a reminder, is the circumference, and that's really the length of the rectangle. The h is the height of the cylinder, but that could really be seen as the same thing as the width of the rectangle. When I multiply everything all together here, 2 times 3.14 times 5 times 10, type that all out in your calculator and you're going to get 314 centimeters squared. My total surface area is my two circles plus that one rectangle. My two circles were 157. My one rectangle was 314. And adding that all together, we get 471, 471 centimeters squared. Okay. Now, be careful. You might get a question that looks like this one, where when I look at it, I'm given the diameter. If you are given the distance all the way across the circle, that's not going to help you because look, all our formulas are given to us where we've got radius and radius. So diameter does not help me. If you are given the diameter to start with, it is a great idea to make a little note for yourself and say if diameter is 12, the radius is half as big. Diameter is all the way across, radius is halfway across. If the diameter is 12, the radius is 6. That's going to help me a lot because as I go to find the area of my circle, so one circle is 3.14 times the radius squared. Well, now I actually have the radius. The radius is 6. So I'm going to go 3.14 times 6 squared. And remember, I have to do 6 squared first. 6 squared is the same thing as 6 times 6, so I get 36. Uh, oops, wrong color. So now it's 3.14 times 36. 3.14 times 36 gives me 113.04 centimeters squared. But that would be one circle. I want two circles. So I'm going to multiply everything here by 2, and I'll just sneak my 2 in front. And that gives me in total 226.0 eight centimeters squared. Now I got to do the rectangle. The rectangle, we find that by going 2 times 3.14 times r times h. 2 times 3.14, which again is just our approximation for pi. And then the radius here is 6, so I'm going to use that number 6. And the height, that's how tall the cylinder is. This one's like a little hockey puck. Looks like the height is 3. Multiply all those together. Now again, this first part here represents my circumference of the circle. 
So if you have another way of finding circumference of the circle, that's fine. You could just go pi times the diameter, so maybe having the diameter is not so bad. I could go 3.14 times 12 is the same thing as 3.14 times 2 times 6, because 2 times 6 is still 12. Regardless, this formula still works for us. Multiplying everything all together here gives us 113.04 centimeters squared. And when we find our total, so remember our total is made up of the two circles and the one rectangle, and I'm going to add them together. The two circles together are 226.08. The one rectangle was 113.04. And in total, that is 339 and 12 hundredths centimeters squared. Okay, so for the formula of a cylinder, we've got two circles and we've got the one rectangle. If you want to work straight from the formula, you can. Here's the big formula, 2 times pi times r squared. That gives you your two circles, because pi r squared is one circle. We have two, so we multiply it by two. Then I'm going to add in the rectangle. The rectangle needs to be the circumference times the height. The circumference being 2 times 3.14 times r, or 2 times pi times r, then times the height of the cylinder. So if you want to, you can work directly from this formula, but again, I really recommend that you understand what this formula means and represents, because as we start making things more difficult in grade 9, it's very easy to understand how you can change this formula to make it work for what you need.